This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Hi, Jim Schwartz. Listening to the Hindsight 20 Podcast. I'm your host, Jerry Mallory, proud member of the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in this week's episode. As always, it's good to talk about the Detroit Lions. You know, win, lose, or draw, but especially after a win and an improbable win at that. Let's face it, uh, there wasn't many, whether it be fans, pundits, professionals, semi professionals, whatever. If you're talking about the Lions versus the Eagles, by and large, uh, the Eagles were picked to win, even by the most devout Lions fans. Now, last night, I had a moment of Kool-Aid uh, clarity, if you will, and I said, you know, the Lions are going to find a way to win this one. And I went from the old standard stable because they're random, not because they're better than Philly, not because they've been playing a certain way, all because, hey, when you're drinking Kool-Aid and you want to just, you want to pick your team to win, you'll say, oh, they're random, they'll find a way. But deep down inside, you're asking for an official prediction from me. I was just like everyone else thinking that this team had no chance to win. Now, they opened up hot. We all saw it. And uh, just like Miss Mallory said, you know, it, it's always a tell of two halves for this team. It's so obvious. Uh, we're, I'm waiting. You know, I figure eventually it's going to be one way or another. Uh, whether it be good or bad, this team would just look uh, kind of lousy for a full set. Now, Chicago game, it was kind of like that. To me, they looked lousy the whole game. Um, but, you know, they were in the whole game. I'm, I'm waiting for one game or another whether it be a loss or a win, where pretty much the result is known, you know, early and it stays that way. Uh, we're up 21 to 7, I want to say. And, uh, the lovely Miss Mallory comes in, being a diehard fan as she is. And, you know, she's a diehard. Maybe she doesn't drink as much Kool-Aid as me. So her, her sensibility, see, is, uh, is a little bit better. And she said it, you know, plain and simple. Well, here comes the second half. Here comes the third quarter. Here comes the fourth quarter. And, uh, sure enough, giving up a lead once again, but finding that victory was really big. And, and you know, you take your hats off. I've got some issues. There's some negative things and things I want to talk about. I think uh, Philly, with some boneheaded situations, kind of helping us get the victory. But it's the NFL, and ultimately, uh, I'm not making too many apologies for a win, especially for a team that uh, just haven't been doing it much, getting victories. So, you know, you lose three in a row. And you're going up against an undefeated team that had a bye week. So everything was lined up for this to be another defeat. So getting this victory was big. So we'll do our normal. We'll do our call outs and shout outs as we do each and every week. We call out the players that have been bad, <coughs> Lake and Tomlinson. And we'll give shout outs to those that did good. We'll do three and three. We'll go around the NFC North, look and see, you know, who's doing what. This Minnesota team, it's like every time they lose a player, they get better. You know, we know about. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater and Adrian Peterson, now Stefan Diggs. Um, and then on the offensive line, they've had injuries with Smith and Boone. It doesn't matter. You know, they, they keep losing guys and they get better. And it's like, you remember in the eighties or nineties, if you're a wrestling fan, where it's that time of the match and it's Hulk Hogan and he starts hulking up. Okay. And, and when you punch him, it just makes him stronger. You punch him, and he's shaking and vibrating. You punch him again, he's getting more and more powerful. Then you punch him one last time, and he points at you, and you know the beginning of the end is near. That's this Minnesota Vikings team, man. They keep getting punched with injuries. They keep getting stronger and stronger. We'll talk about them and the rest of the NFC North. The Packers are playing right now. As always, we're rooting for their demise. Uh, we'll look ahead to the LA Rams game. It should be interesting. I do have some worries, some consternations, if you will, some fears, and, uh, we'll discuss those. And, uh, I want to, I want to give some props to this offensive line as well. It's still a little shaky, but it has the makings of being a very promising young offensive line. So, uh, props to, uh, what this team has done. And, uh, Martin Mayhew is responsible for some of these young guys. Overall, I'm liking what I'm seeing from them. So uh, we'll take a look at them uh, as a whole. So uh, without any further delay, let's 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 take a look and a listen, if you will, at uh, some of the comings and goings uh, of this victory. Let's start off with Matthew Stafford. Uh, he went ahead being the leader uh, that he was with a very good game. Uh, he talked about uh, the confidence that he had on the game winning drive, pretty much saying, you know what, guys, 
I've been here before. I've done it before. And sure enough, uh, he looked good. That pass to Golden Tate at the end was solid. Let's listen and see what Stafford had to say. You know, Golden did a great job. A um, little deeper than I expected him to be. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what she waiting, said. Waiting, waiting for him to kind of show up with a little bit of a crossing route. Um, and uh, he got through some traffic. I saw 53 at the last second, you know, just bailing, getting a little bit of depth. And I uh, threw it to where I thought it was, was going to be a good spot. Didn't see the rest, but I'll see it on uh, Monday. Yeah, I felt really confident. Um, you know, it was huge plays by our defense. The Really, the, the two turnovers were, were big-time plays. Um, but once we got the ball back, um, you know, we knew it was our opportunity to go. We obviously, you know, didn't play as well as we could in the second half on the offensive side of the ball. Um, just gotten long yardage too much, you know, whether we didn't, you know, have first down uh, efficient runs or, or um, sacks or drop passes or bad throws, whatever it was. We just had too many mistakes on first, second down in the second half. But that was our drive to go do it and, uh, you know, made a big play to get there and then uh, wish I could have, you know, thrown a touchdown to make it a little bit uh, a little bit easier, but, you know, it didn't happen. Um, you know, I think we just played really, you know, smart, um, efficient football. Um, there weren't massive, huge plays. Um, we were just staying ahead of the chains, getting first downs. You know, first downs lead to touchdowns in this league. We did a good job of that, and then we were converting in the red zone. Um, you know, we were by no means perfect on those drives, but uh, played well. And then the second half just, you know, they didn't really do too much different. Um, we just kind of hurt ourselves. You know, we don't really pay too much attention, honestly, to the record of the people we're playing. Um, we just... Watch them on film, study them, try to figure out how we're going to beat them and go out there and beat them. And, um, you know, we hadn't done that the last couple of weeks and, and needed a win at home. And, and um, you know, it's a big one. But at the same time, um, you know, we got to we got to stack these and just keep playing, uh, keep playing well. You know, I think you want to play smart. I think we called two really good plays to, you know, give us a chance to run the ball in. And um, it didn't happen, um, you know, but we made them use timeouts. And then the last play, you know, they didn't – I look at the picture now and they didn't – covered as well as they could have and I just was looking at the wrong guy at the wrong time you know it just happens sometimes and and uh you know I wish I could have thrown a touchdown pass there but we knew a sack was going to be better than throwing the ball away make them you know burn their last time out so um try to run around there for a little bit and just you know wish as, a, as an offensive player I always want to score a touchdown there and make them make them go score a touchdown but uh it didn't happen yeah um you know the fumble was just on me I mean I had two hands on it. I was turning one hand to squeeze it and tuck it and run. It just came out, and um, that one beat me up. I was I was pretty ticked off about that. Um, but the rest of it, just trying to make timely runs if I had to, uh, keep us ahead of the chains. Obviously had a, a one pretty long one there early in the game that was good. Um, couldn't outrun 58 there at the end. He's definitely faster than I am, but uh, it helped us win, so I'm all, I'm all for it. A couple more for Matthew. You're asking twice for um, I don't know. You know, I'm not thinking about running. Um, it's just happening. Surely aren't calling any runs for me. I'm no good at that. But, uh, you know, it's just happening sometimes, um, you know, recognizing coverage early and, and maybe a play that isn't going to be great into a certain coverage. And, and um, you know, my guys up front are doing a good job of giving me lanes and creases around the outside, whatever it is, and just trying to go make plays. No, it happened to me once in college, and I actually got – rocked like in the head afterwards had a big goose egg on my forehead and tore my lip up and all that stuff so i got easy i got you know got away easy this time um but it's uh it's never a good feeling not to not to have the old helmet on last question oh, i love it um you know as a as a player you just you want the opportunity to stay out there and and make the play to, to help win the game or keep the drive alive or whatever it is and uh you know, there's a lot of trust in us, you know, to make go go make smart decisions, make a play work, and uh, we're able to get it done. So there you have it, Matt Stafford breaking down the game. Uh, that is a scary moment, you know, with with the uh, with the helmet flying off, and you know, Philly shot themselves in the foot quite a few times, if you ask me, and that was a big uh, help for us getting the game. Oftentimes, that's us. That was us a few weeks ago. That was us against the Titans, and you know, you can say it's Jim Shorts and his defense, and uh, but they made some mistakes on offense as well. Uh, a few things about Stafford. Number one, um, the bangs. Uh, I'm not sitting here trying to be like a fashionista, but uh, not a good look, Mr. Number nine. But seriously, uh, him using his legs the last couple of years, I think he's in better shape. And that's a big reason as to why uh, we're seeing him run a little bit more. He's, you know, he came in the league. I don't know. I'm going to call him pudgy or, or what, but uh, he's in much better shape. He takes care of his body and that's great. 
I hate losing guys like Calvin and Sue. Now that's a that's a John Madden statement, you know. All right, you you you, you don't want to play with without guys like uh, Sue and and Calvin. You do seriously. I mean, it's it's a no brainer statement of all no brainer statements. But uh, the one thing I like as a result of losing guys like that is uh, this is Stafford's team now, and I think every successful team, uh, by and large, their quarterback is their guy. Unless you're like you know the Baltimore Ravens a few years or. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, by and large, the successful teams, uh, even if it's not their best player, and oftentimes it is, their leader is that quarterback. And this is Stafford's team now. This is his team. Uh, And you like seeing that. You like seeing him be that leader because we had questions, remember? We wondered if, you know, if he could be that guy, would he be vocal enough? We look at that, you know, Calvin, and you saw he was kind of a quiet leader. And we start to wonder, you know, uh, Stafford's kind of laid back, and he's, you know, oh, everything's kind of cool. You know, he almost sounds like Bill Clinton, you know. And and you wonder if he could be that guy. Uh, you see it now. You know, when there were questions about his health, there were questions about how hard he worked, how much he wanted it, how much he was dedicated to football. All those things are out the window. The guy's tough as nails. He's been getting beat and beat and obliterated. All right? Most NFL quarterbacks do. OK, but uh, him especially. So uh, they're keeping him a little bit cleaner this year. Last year, not so much. And, um, you know, he's tough. We see that uh, a monument of his health has been all the games. I think he is the most active uh, quarterback right now since, you know, his last injury was sometime in his second year uh, from years three on. The guy's been the Iron Man and then the leadership. We see it. It's not just, you know, screaming at tape, but that is part of it. It's not just screaming at Ebron. That's part of it. It's the whole package. Um, taking command, being comfortable with the offense. This is his team. So, you know, salute to him. He'll definitely, spoiler alert, you know, he'll be a part of the shout out section. No surprise there. Let's talk about this offensive line before we take a break. Uh, something happened in the game. Lakin Tomlinson, who sucks, was benched. Uh, you know, there's questions as to if it's an injury or what. I think it's because of his poor play. The guy's been getting beat. All right, saying he's beat like a drum is an understatement. Uh, it's it's been bad. Uh, he was replaced. Many of us thought, figured that the next guy up would be Joe Dahl. Uh, he was the next man up in terms of your guards, but it was actually Graham Glasgow. We all know I have an affinity for Graham Glasgow. I mocked and predicted he would become a lion. Uh, a lot of it had to do with my disdain for Travis Swanson and wanting someone that was like the exact opposite of Swanson, where Swanson is smaller, more technically sound. I just felt like the compromise uh, pocket for the Lions sent Rayola to Swanson. I wanted a big guy. And so you see this guy that tangled it up in the Big Ten, uh, did his thing at Michigan. I wanted him as my center of the future. Lo and behold, Travis Swanson has been playing good. I apologize to you. Graham Glasgow, fortunately for him, is versatile where he can play guard or center. He came in for Lakin. Okay. I don't know if it was an injury for sure or if it was just a benching. Um, and he looked good, okay? Much better than what Lake and Thomason can do. This offensive line has promise. All right, Taylor Decker, it's early. He's looked like one of, if not the best tackle in the draft so far. You know, worth the pick by a thousand times. The man's looked good. He's a left tackle rookie, already playing solid. And uh, they gave him that job right off the bat, and it's paying dividends. Uh, moving along, Larry Warford, he didn't look good today. He's up and down. I don't think... You know, for a while there, I don't think he's going to be on this team is what I'm trying to say. For a while there, because you got Warford and Reef that, you know, they're going to have to get paid. And I felt like they were maneuvering and doing things to where, you know, maybe one of them would get a contract, but the other wouldn't. I, and for a while, I figured it would be Warford that would get, you know, some money. And then they would let Reef walk. I'm starting to feel like it's the other way around. Reef has been solid there on the right side. You know, you give him a fair market right tackle salary. And uh, Warford, I think, may be replaced. Now, uh, the future, I think, is bright with this offensive line, though. Um, Decker, I feel comfortable with. Swanson, I'm starting to feel comfortable with. Reef, you know, he's on the contract year. Uh, he's young. He's always played hard, though. I feel comfortable with him as my right tackle. And so in your guards positions, you got Lake and Tomlinson, who I, you know, who could you feel comfortable? Or who does feel comfortable uh, when talking about him? Of course, no one does. He's been awful. Uh, and then Warford, who I like, he's been up and down. I don't think he'll be here for the long term. Enter two draft picks, Graham Glasgow, Joe Dahl. Uh, both of them look good to me. And if I are, the future of our offensive line is uh, Decker, Dahl, Swanson, Glasgow, and Reef, 
I think that's pretty good. That's not Dallas Cowboys good, but, you know, so far, I'm pleased. That's the point I'm trying to make. You know, can Swanson keep this up? I hope so. And he's the one guy that I can, and you know, I can surely say I was wrong going so far. Uh, but, you know, time remains to be seen how much he'll hold off. We're going to take a quick break, guys. When we come back, we're going to do our usual, our call-outs and shout-outs. We'll look around the NFC North, and then we'll close this baby off looking at our next game. I'm a little bit worried about it, but, hey, I was worried about this one, too, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Jerry Mallory here for the Hindsight 20 Podcast. Look, guys, if you want your ad to be placed here, it's simple. Send us an email. We can make something happen. Let's do a little business. Hindsight 20 Podcast at gmail.com. Right, we're back on the hindsight 20. I'm going to thank all of you for sticking around real briefly at story time. I, I haven't done this. Uh, after the break, I would talk about various things, whether it be music, uh, movies, and the like. Uh, we'll do a little hodgepodge. Uh, with the movies, just recently saw Magnificent Seven. It was magnificent. Very good movie. Denzel Washington is Sam Chisholm. You had uh, Peter Sarsgaard in the movie. Um, uh, who else did it? Chris Pratt. It was a good movie. Okay, highly recommend it. A few trailers that came out this week that uh that got my attention. Number one, uh, you gotta look at Power Rangers. Now, if you grew, grew up when I did in the '90s, you know that Power Rangers was a big, big part of your afternoons. I think it was like around 4:30 or so. Uh, we all were right there waiting with bated breath for Power Rangers. So there have been tons of iterations. I kind of stopped watching it, you know, as I got older. Uh, really the first cast, the first American cast I was into. Then after that, it fell off the trailer, though. For the new movie looks pretty good. And so, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then, uh, The Great Wall with Matt Damon. Uh, like my sister put it, you know, you're looking at this trailer and at first it looks like it's gonna be like a historical piece. Uh, but then you see the added elements. Two movies I'm definitely looking forward to seeing. And then, uh, Netflix, uh, man, Stranger Things was awesome. And so Netflix Originals has really been doing good. The one I'm looking forward to now is called Black Mirror. Um, it looks like a Twilight Zone X-File type of deal. Uh, very excited to see what that can do. Uh, in other news, uh, oh, Jerry Mallory here, uh, this, you know, this Atkins diet, uh, it's been working. Okay. I am down to 217 pounds. Uh, when I first started this diet, I was around 260 or so. I I have the benefit of being tall, okay? At six foot three ish, you know, at 260, I wasn't like, you know, fat per se, but I did need to lose some weight, okay? It was obvious. Uh, I've been doing this diet now for about two and a half months. Uh, at my very peak, I think I was, I think I may have been at 278 at my very highest, right after tearing my ACL last year, not working, being sedentary, if you will. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I'm down at 217. This is the, the, the smallest I've been since high school. Uh, my blood pressure is doing good. My health overall, everything is working good. And I'm proud of that. And it's something I want to keep going. I've heard one of the things with Atkins is, you know, you can get on it, but uh, a lot of people gain their way back. But I think what happens is, and I've been doing my research, is when people, you know, they, the, the low carb thing, after a while, they kind of start giving in. Um, I'm looking in ways of sustaining both me and my wife have been doing it and both have seen results. Uh, and so I, I'm very proud of that. And, uh, you know, in that aspect, just got to keep moving. Now I want to add a little bit of uh, weight training and working out. I'm losing weight. Like I need a whole new wardrobe. None of my suits fit. Pants don't fit. I want to add some some tone, some definition, if you will. And so, uh, you know, that's my story time today. Just a little bit about what's going on with me personally and some of the things I'm enjoying. Uh, I got to start doing that more. You know, we talk about lions. We talk about lions, but it's always room to veer away from that uh, every now and then. So certainly if you have a question about lions, by all means, you know, at Jerry Mallory NFL, but just about anything in general, hey, I'm pretty well-rounded sports, movies, music, you name it. Let's do it. All right. Back to our team. Let's, before we get out of here, do our call outs and shout outs, and then we'll go around the NFC North. So uh, let's start with the bad news. Call outs, Lake and Tomlinson. Uh, Andre Roberts and, uh, you know, you pick Teron Walker, Steph Charles, who didn't even play in Hello De Nada. Uh, Lake and Thomason, you suck, man. It's like every year I have an offensive lineman that, you know, I just don't like. I've got my beams on, okay? Uh, we can go back to Steven Peterman, all right? Steven Peterman was a guy that 
I just, oh, I would just rail and I would beat down and just talk about how much I wanted him to be off of that offensive line. Then the year we went 11 and five, it was Garrett Reynolds, who was our right tackle. He was a joke. Okay. He sucked. He was horrible. Last year, Travis Swanson got a lot of that heat, um, as well as Adrian Waddle. This year, it's you, Lakin Tomlinson. Uh, maybe you want to go and be a doctor a little bit sooner. Now, some people are saying he is slowly coming to his own. He's figuring some things out. He's got raw talent, but week in and week out, I just don't see it. And I feel like Joe Dahl and or Graham Glasgow would be better suited taking your spot. Hope it happens soon. Andre Roberts, I don't care about that one punt return for a touchdown. The dude has been bad. He takes it out of the end zone and we routinely start the ball. Forget the 25 where you can start at now if you take a knee. We don't even make it to the old school mark of the 20. We're often at the 17, at the 16. Then when you have a few chances because, hey, your top three receivers are going to be there. When you do have a chance, uh, you're dropping passes, dude. I don't care, okay? Uh, I know that maybe they want to go with a veteran, so when they trust it, I have a tough time believing that Jay Lee or Jace Billingsley would be worse than this guy. I could easily see Jace Billingsley as a kicker punt returner. Uh, when Dwayne Washington comes back, I'm looking forward to seeing him in those return duties. Roberts has been bad, okay? Uh, there's no other way to put it. And let's replace this guy. You know, Lions wait so much, you know, to replace guys. Like when Machine Mathis just wasn't working last year, took an injury for his replacement, uh, James ahead of Let's not, you know, you're doing like eight games. Let's get, let's get a replacement. The punt return was nice. That's fine. But, you know, one good punt return for a touchdown. I mean, you got like 17 other bad ones. You know, you, you do the math. It's not working. And then Steph Charles, who we, we really hoped would be someone that would produce. He's not even suiting up on game day. Alodi Nada gets hurt. But even when he's out there, you know, these running backs are just, the run defense isn't there. Plain and simple. Um, Jordan Howard, uh, last week, he looked good this week too, but you got guys like Jordan Howard. And, you know, uh, what Smallwood and Ryan Matthews, just the run defense has to improve. And then Teron Walker, you know, he had a, a spark, all right? Like Jay-Z said when his song, you had a spark when you started. You look good. He got injured last year. and We thought, man, okay, he'll come back and he'll look like he did. He has not. Just not in the script. You're not seeing him. I'm seeing Sean Robinson make plays. Like, I'm hearing his name called. I'm seeing him stuff in the gap. Not seeing it from him. So those are my calls. For the shout outs, it's simple. Darius Slay, man. Listen, brother, you've been playing good. I got a little Twitter debate with one of the guys last week, and he kind of conceded eventually because, uh, you know, Slay got a lot of disrespect. So his, his wife to be, I don't know if they, if they are married or not, but I think it's his wife to be, Jen Williams, you know, kind of got on Twitter and, and said, you know, they were subject to some racist comments and some disrespectful comments. Number one, no matter how bad a guy is playing, these guys are humans. These guys are men. These are fathers, brothers, sons. Be respectful. Don't don't be an idiot, okay? I went on and, and gave him props, saying he's one of the best in the league and keep grinding. And so someone came on and said, how bad he sucks? He said, what games have you been watching, bro? He's been horrible. No, the defense has been bad. Slay has been good all year, okay? Uh, and eventually the guy conceded. He said, yeah, true. And hey, when you're losing and we're frustrated, we're all venting. That's fine. But, you know, you held Elshon Jeffrey uh, to little to none. Uh, and then he does what he did this week. Finally getting a pick. Got the sack last week. The force fumble is good. Seeing Slade do what he did. Stafford, steady as he goes. He was about 80% passing. Would have been better. I think it was like maybe two drops or, or even more. His accuracy has been there. And then Golden Tate. I want to give him credit because, you know, he's had a rough go so far. Um, he's saying it's between the ears, so it's mental. Uh, maybe some people are speculating, you know, he thought he'd be the number one guy, but Marvin Jones seemed like he's taking that role. Whatever the case is, Golden Tate with a huge catch that put us in the game winning field goal. And then a trick play or two for him, uh, you know, getting the ball, you know, he is good, making people miss. And so props to you, Golden Tate, a rebound game, if you will. Now, uh, around the NFC North, we already talked about, you know, the damage that Minnesota has been doing. They're a world class wrecking crew. Yes. I just made an old school rap reference, the world class record, but that's what they are. They lose guys. It doesn't matter. They keep winning. Okay. This team is undefeated and you know, you want to crown them, <laughs> crown them. I'm almost ready to just crown them as the NFC North champions. Now, uh, so Minnesota's looking good. Chicago, they had a shot. They were up, but they could not sustain. They end up losing to the Colts. The Colts have looked bad, but uh, they're victorious in this one. 29 to 23. Now at this point, Green Bay is up 
six to seventeen. Seventeen to six, maybe is the more correct way of putting that against the New York G Man Giants. So we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. Before we get out of here, let's talk briefly about the LA Rams. We're we're running close here on time. Here's my fear with the number one uh, is that pass rush. It is, you know, yeah, Robert Quinn, whatever, if he plays, he's got some injuries, but Aaron Donald is dominating. And I'm thinking about him lining up and Lakin Thomas and being right there. And I'm already having nightmares. Okay. I'm, I'm done with Ebron versus Donald. You should be too. But just as a player, this guy is legit. And then on the other side of the ball, you know, the running backs have, uh, have been getting their way against us. So Jordan Howard and Ryan Matthews and old man Darren Sproles can get productivity against us. Todd Gurley, who had a pretty good game this week. I think he's ready for a breakout game. Hasn't really had that this year, so I'm a little bit worried. Um, I don't know, man. Who am I predicting to win this one? I hate to say it. I think the Rams may, may very well find a way. It really depends, though. If I'm looking and I see that Ebron's back and then Ziggy's back and then some type of miracle of Levy, I might switch that to him. But for right now... Uh, no Ziggy, no Levy. I think that affects the run game severely. Run defense, excuse me. And then Aaron Donald wreaking havoc on that offensive line. But we'll have to see. This is why they play the games, right? I want to thank each and every one of you for listening. This has been a fun show. I'll be back next Monday with a win, loser, draw discussion of the Detroit Lions. And until then, it's been Jerry Malley thanking you for listening to the Hindsight 20.